What's up everyone? Welcome to my most anticipated films of 2020. Now, there's going to be 10 films on here and I got the idea from yesterday when I was watching the trailer for the film Morbius with Jared Leto in and it just got me thinking like, wonder what else other films are coming this year and there was some that I knew and there was some that I didn't. So, what I've done here is I compiled a list of 10 of my personal films that I'm looking forward to. This doesn't mean that they're going to be the best films of the year or whatever. It's just a list that I'm personally looking forward to and why I'm looking forward to them. So, let's just crack on with it, right? Eh? Um, I won't do any honourable mentions today or anything like that. I'll just, just start at number 10. And number 10, here we go. It's going to be... That's right, it's The Invisible Man. Now, there's a few films that could have took this 10 spot. I was... Thinking a bit what to put here, but after watching the trailer, I just thought, you know what, this is more for me. It's got like a Hollow Man vibe going for it, uh, which I watched not long ago. I really enjoyed it. Um, but my advice is don't watch the trailer because it shows you the whole film. I did turn it off halfway through because it was like, one, you know, them Netflix films where they just uh, show you the whole thing. And what I seen was enough for, to convince me that this is should be on my top ten. Um, but I know Universal uh, were trying to do like a whole Universal Monsters thing, like the Avengers, and make this big world of all these, the Invisible Man, the Mummy and all that, you know, come together. I don't know if that's still happening because the Mummy failed with Tom Cruise. So, but this could leave it open-ended for that to happen. I don't know. But yeah, number 10 is the Invisible Man. It looks like a film for me. And if you like Hollow Man or whatever, this might be for you. So yeah, number 10, The Invisible Man. Okay, number 9 is going to be a bit of a surprise here. Uh, I don't think many people might put this on their list, but it is The Secret Garden. Now, the reason for this is, me and my sister used to watch this film all the time as kids. And I always used to quote the film to make her laugh and stuff. Um, I can see you, Miss Mary. But yeah, uh, <laughs> that's just a terrible impression of Duncan, I think his name is in the film. But yeah, it, it, it's got Colin Firth on board and Julie Walters. Now, that's a good sign for me because they're two top, well, top actors, top actors. And from what I've seen, it looks really, really good. And if you haven't seen The Secret Garden, it's basically about this young girl who has to go and live with her relatives who aren't really very nice to her. I think they're the relatives. I can't remember. It's been a long time. But they've got, like, this big manor. And she doesn't... They don't really want to know her, but they have to take her in. And she finds this secret garden... And it's like, it's full of magic and stuff like that. And she makes friends with, you know, a cousin and this gardener kid. And, you know, they just go on a little adventure. And it's quite a good film. Um, but yeah, number nine, Secret Garden. Number eight is going to be The New Mutants. Um, I think a lot of people might be burnt out on X-Men. And that's understandable because there's been a lot of films. The one last year, I did not see it, but I heard it was terrible. And I think that sort of put me off going to see it. Now I've made this channel. Uh, <laughs> if I had this channel last year, I would have went to see it just to do the review. But this is very interesting because this is like X-Men as a horror film. Which, it's an interesting take really. I mean, when I've seen the trailer, it's got like vibes of A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. With all these like uh, young, young teenagers are in this mental hospital. And they're all trying to like talk about their problems to each other and it looks really good but a bit of a red flag for me is that this was meant to come out in 2018 and then 2019 and now it's coming out this year so it's been in, po in production for quite a while now the producers have said that they have took this time to make it more like more scary and it's took inspiration from other films I don't know if that's true maybe it was just a the script weren't working, I don't know, maybe that's just like a cover up to make it sound better or whatever, but from what I've seen, I'm really looking forward to the new mutants, so that, that is number eight. Number seven, and this has got probably the most potential on this list to be my film of 2020, and that is Tenet, I think that's how you say it, a new film from Christopher Nolan, who I just think is an amazing director, he, what I like about Christopher Nolan is, He's ambitious, not and gets in his way. And I watched the making of The Dark Knight and some of the things he had to do 
to film that film and overcome so many obstacles was fascinating. I mean, he, he's not scared to go to the next level and that's why I like Christopher Nolan. Plus, I love the whole Batman trilogy. I love Inception, The Prestige. So, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, one thing I've known as well, all his films look amazing. And what I've seen of this, it looks incredible. Uh, I've seen the trailer once. Well, I've seen that teaser trailer at the cinema. It was about 30 seconds long. I've seen the other trailer today. I didn't even know it was out. I don't need to see any more now. I will, if another trailer comes, I won't watch it. I've seen enough. I just want to go in sort of not knowing anything about it and just have an incredible time at the cinema because that's what you get with Christopher Nolan. So yeah, number seven is Tenet. Number six is going to be Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, I'm not really sure from what I've seen on this if I'm going to like it or not. I probably will because it's Ghostbusters and it's got like a Stranger Things vibe going on with for it. Um, it's like all, I think it's like all these kids and they find like, or it gets given, passed down to them from, I think one of the Ghostbusters might have been their grandfather or whatever, I'm not sure, but they get the car and basically find all the gear and this could be the next generation of Ghostbusters, so this could be setting up for like another tr couple of films or, a, you know, whatever. Um, but I don't know. It, it's probably going to be the highest grossing film of the year. It's the big summer blockbuster that's coming. I just don't know if this film, like it's away from New York and it's in this small little town. I don't know. I'll just have to go in and I'll know when I've seen the film, all right? A lot of people really think this trailer looked amazing. I just thought it looked a bit mediocre, but I'm not sure. A lot of people were disappointed with the last one as well, understandably. So this is going to take a new direction for the Ghostbusters franchise. Now, near the time this film comes out, I'll probably review Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2, uh, the remake, if you want to call it that, with all the female cast, and I'll do this, and then I'll probably rank them as a franchise. Uh, Paul Rudd's in this as well. Always love Paul Rudd. Every film he's in, he always makes me laugh. He's a great... He's like a um, positive character uh, actor to have in your films. So yeah, number... Is that f number, number six is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Number five. Could be a bit of a surprise to people. Um, because <clears throat> this didn't get a big release for the first one. And this is the sequel. i seen this on the Sky Cinema Store. And I think it came to Netflix at one point, And that is Terrifier 2. There's quite a few horror films on this list, if you haven't noticed. Now, David Howard Thornton, who plays Arthur Clown in the last one, is in, oh, he's he's such a creepy villain. And I love Arthur Clown. He's like a modern-day slasher icon. And we haven't had many of them for a, a while. And I, I've i just got a thing for films with killer clowns in. I always have done, like, since It. And Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I love that film. But this Art the Clown makes Pennywise seem like Ronald McDonald. He really does. He is uh, just a he's just a horrible uh, villain who just doesn't care and he, he'll just take your head off without thinking about it. Um there's a scene in the first one, and I'm not I'm not joking, that scene will stay with me forever. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. And it's one of the best slasher kills I've ever seen in a film, if not the best. And I'm just hoping the Terrifier 2 has more of that. So, yeah. Number five is the Terrifier 2. Or, oh, not the Terrifier, Terrifier 2. Number four is going to be Halloween Kills. Uh, I, I like the last film. Michael Myers is absolutely brutal in that film. And I, I imagine he's going to be the same in this because that is this is like the sequel to that one. The only problem I had with it is I think this Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode uh, storyline might have run its course. I think it would have been better if she just like they killed her off in the last one or she sacrificed herself to rescue some of the other characters. I don't know. I just she didn't want too many here. Uh, time will tell. The only problem with this is there's another one coming next year, I think, and it's like that is a bit of a red flag for a cash grab. It's like, is this going to be a filler film or are they just like not going to care with the story and just go, oh, people will watch it anyway. I don't know. But I'm looking forward to this. I love all the Halloween films and the, you know what you're getting with Halloween, don't you? So you're just going to get a, a generic slasher film. But 
the cinematography in the last one was the best I've seen for a long time in these horror in these Halloween films. The bit where he's in the petrol station and he just pulls the mask out of this out of this like garbage bin. It was oh, film brilliant. So more of that, please. So number four is Halloween Kills. Number three is gonna be a. A film that was based on a book by Roald Dahl, and it's a film I watched a thousand times as a kid, and that is The Witches. I'm sorry there's no, like, movie poster for this to put in the corner. Sorry, in this corner. Uh, but I'm just going to have to put a picture of the old Grand High Witch there. Um, it's due for an October release, and Robert Zemeckis is going to make this film... And that just tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Forrest Gump, Castaway, Back to the Future, he knows what he's doing. Anne Hathaway is the Grand High Witch, which is a brilliant choice in my opinion. She's a great actress. And she sort of... She, it looks like she could suit the role. Um, but I used to watch this continuous as a kid, but I always thought it needed a sequel. But this looks look like it's going to be more of a remake, which I'm happy about. Now, I just hope that they keep the vibe of that... That movie, I think it's from 1990, because that was a terrifying film for kids. Like, there's this one scene where this girl's walking down an alleyway, she's only like five or six, and this witch just comes and just kidnaps and she's never seen again, and the whole town's freaking out. And it's, I just thought, wow, fuck, that's, that's, that's a bit extreme for a kid's film. This would be perfect if it's like a 12A or something. Um, yeah, so number three is The Witch is really looking forward to that one. Now, this next one could absolutely be horrific. It could be a terrible film, but I don't care. It's my number two, and that is Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I haven't mentioned this on the channel before, but I am a massive video game fan. I own Xbox, Switch, PlayStation 4, keep all my retro games, and the first game I ever played was Sonic the Hedgehog, and that is why this film's number two. I wouldn't be into video games if it weren't for that. Um... Well, maybe I would have, but that's what got me into video games. <sighs> Sonic 2, one of my best favourite games of all time. So, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, from what I see in the trailer, Jim Carrey um, looks like he's back to his best. I laughed a couple of times at him. He's going to be Dr. Robotnik in this film. At first, I was like, I don't think he suits that role. But when I seen the trailer, I was like, oh yeah, he, he really got. it looks like he's really got into it. Um, I'm glad he listens to the fans because Sonic looked absolutely terrible and what I've seen now he looks he looks like the video game character so it's good that he listens to the fans now this is due I think this film this is the one film on this list that it comes out first I think it's due out on the Valentine's Day I will have a review of that 100% uh, I'll be there day one no matter what so yeah number two Sonic the Hedgehog okay you might know from my love of horror video that I am a massive horror fan. There's a few horror films on this list, as you can tell. And number one for me is Candyman. Uh, this is... Um, I thought this was going to be a remake, but it's not. Apparently it's a sequel. A spiritual sequel, whatever that means. Um, but Jordan Peele has wrote this, produced it. He's going to produce it. I don't know why he didn't direct it. But that is going to be Nia, Nia Da Costa. I haven't seen any of work before she's i think she's done two top boy episodes and i think there was a film called little woods i haven't seen it so it's she might be an upcoming director or whatever if she does well with this it'd be interesting to see jordan peele's take on this it really will now tony todd is credited in this film as sticks whoever the hell he is i don't think he's going to be Candyman, but from going by the actors i've seen on imdb uh, I forgot the guy's name, but it's it, it doesn't look like it's going to be Tony Todd anyway. But it's just weird the way he's in this film. Very strange. Now, the reason that this is number one for me is I just love the first one. It's one of the best horror films ever made, period. I watched it again two years ago. It is pure horror. Like, it's not... It doesn't go in any stupid directions or nothing. It doesn't care that it's R-rated. It's just a brilliant story, and it... It, it just goes for the jugular. It really does. Um, and because this is a sequel, I hope it just sort of gets that whole atmosphere of the first one because I just loved everything about that film. And this is going to take place where the old one take place, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But it's more like that area where it's all run down. It's been done up. 
So this could be like Candyman running around or, or appearing around these like modern style buildings or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, <clears throat> number one is Candyman and I cannot wait. I think it's due for summer. Jordan Peele, please deliver. Okay, everyone, so I hope you enjoyed this list. I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun checking out all the trailers and looking up what's what's what with these films. Um, what films are you looking forward to? Let me know in the comments. I'll reply to every single one of you. Uh, but, yeah, look, uh, I've got more videos coming, more of these top tens or whatever. This weekend, I'm hopefully going to go and see Bombshell and hopefully Bad Boys. So I'll have reviews for that coming. But if you want more videos from me, please subscribe and this channel will grow and get better. So yeah, thank you very much everyone for watching and I really appreciate it. Thank you. See you later.